recently on a camping trip with my friends and I don't go camping often guys but as I was out there in the wilderness I realized how useless I was. So throughout my life I haven't actually been taught a lot of survival skills so I felt truly out of my depth. Like I really didn't know how to do anything. So I decided to go online and teach myself the most useful survival hacks I could find. And guys you never know they might actually come in handy and one day may save my life. Or yours. And just a huge warning, guys, you don't want to try any of these for fun at home because some of these are very dangerous to do. Make sure you have supervision and take safety precautions, but these should only be done when your life is actually in danger and it's necessary. Ready? Let's get into the hats. Let's go. For this hat, guys, you need two metal cans. They can be any size, but you need one to fit into the other one. So one has to be kind of fatter and bigger. So what you want to do is take the can with the smallest circumference, pop it onto your big fat can, trace it with a sharpie, and then you're going to cut out that hole so you can fit it in. So once you're done, cut the top and bottom off the thinner can so it turns into a cylinder. So you want to go outside and find some kindling, so things like twigs, leaves, and anything that will catch on fire and pop it into the cylinder. You want to light it because you want to start your little fireplace. So what you've done here is you've basically made your own DIY cooking stove. You can use this to make food or boil water or anything else. For me, I'm uh. boiling water. <laughs> because I just ate. So the best thing about this is you can now use this as a stove. You can boil water, you can cook omelets, you can do whatever you want. You can even just use it to warm yourself up. But the best thing about this is, is you can actually put more kindling in your little cylinder whenever you run out. So it's kind of a permanent little stove. This hack is really good for windy and wet conditions where a normal fireplace will be snuffed out by wind or moisture. The cylinder protects your kindling. So this next hack will get you out of a dire situation as long as you brought along a battery and something metallic. Which could be aluminum or in my case I brought along steel wool which is normally used for cleaning pots and pans. You'll also need some toilet paper which I'm assuming you guys brought with you outdoors. So first you want to fluff up your steel wool by pulling bits out so you create a bunch of frayed edges and it just kind of looks fluffy. Then you want to break up small pieces of tissue paper and put them on top of the steel wool in like a little pile. Finally, touch both ends of your battery onto the steel wool. You'll notice that the steel wool starts burning pretty much straight away. And guys, when I first saw this, I was shocked. And once it comes in contact with the paper pieces, they'll catch on fire too. So for the next hack, you need an empty plastic bottle. And the first thing you do is to cut it in. Next, what you want to do is take the top half of the bottle, remove the lid and flip it upside down. Then what you want to do is either place some cotton balls or any sort of cloth material and pack it down on the bottom. And next, if you bought any charcoal for say an outdoor barbecue or anything like that, you can take it and crush it up into little pieces. And then you want to grab a handful of this and drop it on top of that first layer. Next, you can find some sand from wherever you can and layer this over the charcoal so it fills in all the gaps. So next you want to look around and find some rocks and pebbles for the next layer. Then you want to add some more sand in the next layer and finish it off with some large rocks and pebbles on them. So basically what you created here is a DIY water filter. So if you end up in the wilderness and your only source of water is a dirty pond or lake, you don't want to drink it straight away because that's probably unsafe for you. And there's probably a lot of sediments and debris in it as well. So the charcoal in this filter removes the impurities in the water. And the rest of the other layers that we put down, like the cotton wool or cloth and the rocks, are there to remove the rest of the debris. So once you run the dirty water through this filter, it's still gonna be dirty. As you can see, there's still a lot of discoloration in it, but it's gonna be better than not using it at all. And at least you won't have any little bits of sediments and things in it. So ideally now, you still wanna boil the water if possible, since this filter doesn't get rid of everything, but it can get you out of a pinch if you have no other options. For this hack, you need some batteries and some aluminum foil. What you want to do is to measure the length of your battery and then tear off a bit of alfoil the same height as your battery. Next, you want to roll up your alfoil strip into the same size, like a cylinder, like a battery. By doing this, you pretty much created a dummy battery. This is super useful when you're missing one or two batteries, like for a flashlight. So what you want to do is take out the battery section from the chamber of the flashlight. As you can see here, I have two out of the three batteries. What I'm going to do is pop this alfoil battery into the last chamber and as you can see when I put it all back together it actually turns on. I am amazed. So if you did this without the dummy battery you would see that it doesn't turn on. The dummy battery actually doesn't provide any additional energy it just helps to complete the electrical circuit. 
a super useful hack if you're just missing that one battery, which is what I do because I always forget that one battery. Also, a bonus hack for you guys is the SOS pattern. So basically, you want to use the flashlight to do three short flashes, three long flashes, and three short flashes. That's a lot of flashes in one sentence. So for the next hack, you'll need an empty plastic bottle and some brown sugar. What you want to do is cut the bottle in half and then put a good amount of brown sugar onto the bottom half of the container. Then pour in some water and mix it well so the sugar dissolves. I used warm water because it just makes it that much easier. Flip the top half upside down and place it over the bottom half. By doing this, you essentially made a DIY insect trapper. Insects and bugs are unfortunately part of camping and being outdoors and not my favorite thing in the world. Plus, some can be dangerous especially in Australia. But I'm not a bug person, so this life hack is kind of life-saving for me. After leaving your DIY bug trapper out in the open for a while, it should trap a good amount of flying bugs. So you can enjoy your afternoon in peace. So this next hack requires three tea light candles and two terracotta pots. The pots don't have to be terracotta, but they can be made out of any other material that traps and holds heat. But terracotta works best. But the important thing is, is that one is smaller than the other, and the small one can fit inside the big pot completely. So the first thing you need is some sort of tray with raised edges. I just happened to use this cooking tray. I think it's a bread tin. And then you put the tea lights into the tray and you use three or however many you can fit. You actually want to center these tea lights though. Next, you want to place the small terracotta pot over the center and then you want to cover the hole on the bottom of the pot with some sort of fireproof material i just use the tea light candle in this instance but you can use like aluminum or something else like that and then you just want to place your large pot over the smaller one you may be wondering why i'm leaving gaps on the side of the tray if i want to trap heat in but it actually allows oxygen to go into the tray and allows the flame to keep burning and by doing this, you've created a very efficient heater to warm up a cold room. So keeping warm is one of the most important keys to survival. But keep in mind that this method doesn't actually create more heat than just a regular tea light. But what this does is it actually traps the heat into your containers, which stops it from dissipating into the air. And doing this keeps the heat source much closer to your body and also lasts longer. So for this next hack, you'll need some matches and some clear nail polish. You want to take the nail polish and apply a few coats to the end of the matches. I suggest you apply a few coats and apply it generously. Next, you want to let it dry and you're pretty much done. People often bring matches outdoors when they're camping or hiking, but no one counts on your matches getting wet. If this happens, it's almost impossible to relight the matches. However, with your nail polish coated matches, even getting them wet is not a problem. Just dry them off gently with a paper towel or cloth, then strike them like a regular match. It should ignite without any problems at all. If you notice, I did this hack in a single camera take, so there are no tricks here. So most people bring a first aid kit when they go hiking, but there are a few ways to bandage certain tricky areas if you happen to get injured. For the foot, you should always bandage on either side of the heel in a crisscross pattern. By doing this, the bandage stays firm and securely on your foot without slipping down. For wrist or hand injuries, you want to crisscross your bandage around the thumb, just like this. And by doing this, you're creating maximum security for the bandage so it doesn't slip around during the day. So for this next hack, you'll need some shoes that aren't waterproof, like cloth and canvas shoes, and a tea light or a candle or a tea light candle. So just take a candle and rub the wax all over your shoe. You'll start to go a little bit white, which is the waxy residue. Next, you wanna take a hair dryer and melt this wax so it kind of melts into the shoe. So guys, this part is super satisfying. Just watch it like become clear. And a good tip for you guys as well is to do extra layers. So I feel like the best amount of layers is three layers. And after this is dry, you've pretty much created waterproof shoes. So just compare what happens when I drop water onto regular shoes versus this new improved waterproof shoe. And like wet shoes and socks aren't exactly life-threatening or dangerous, but why not? So guys, I used to believe if you're ever stuck in an elevator and it started plummeting downwards, then maybe I could save myself from the fall if I jumped at the exact moment that the elevator crashed. And guys, I used to practice this on the lift in my head all the time. Let me know if you guys ever had this thought as well. However, it turns out that this is actually incorrect for a number of reasons. Firstly, the force of your jump is probably not enough to counter the speed that you're falling at to make a difference. But secondly, you also wouldn't know when to jump. 
since you're inside the elevator and you can't see the bottom of the lift shaft. Well, I hate to break it to you, but experts actually say no method is ideal. But if you had to choose one, it's to lie on the floor of the elevator on your back with one arm behind your head. The reason behind this is that the force of the impact would be distributed more evenly across your whole body. And the arm behind your head will protect your brain from trauma. Even though the likelihood of this situation happening is extremely low, I guess I still feel a little better knowing what the best position to get into is. So these are the survival hacks that I learned that I thought were useful. Let me know what your favorite is down below. Don't forget to check out my song Empire and follow me on social media. Also, don't forget to check out Whimsical at Walgreens and Target. I have lots of fun art kits and slime. Bye guys. Love you. Mwah.